And the moment will be consumed and the numbers will be in huge like the floods that will come and on the floods there will be foam and scum and rubbish floating like that two things one is the number of the ummah will be in big huge and secondly is they will be valueless and will be wiped out easily without any effort whatsoever if we just look at the history of islam in currently now in the world never ever in the world has there been so many muslims 1.8 billion people on the earth which makes up about 23 percent of the muslim population if we look at the majority muslim countries 50 countries of the 175 countries of the world, 197, 195, whatever the exact amount is, 45 of the Muslim-run countries of the world in the hands of the Muslims. If we look at natural reserves, and probably never ever so much of the natural reserves of the world was in the control of Muslims. If you look at the gas, let's just take one aspect, oil. 75% of the world's oil reserves are in the hands of the Muslims. Look at the US, which is a superpower of the world. They control only 2%. Western is 4%. If we look at land mass, the largest land mass concentration on Earth, 22% of the world. Then if you look at ocean uh, key control strategic position, naval straits are in the hands of the Muslims. If you look at knowledge, the amount of books and literature and information about Islam that is available, probably never in history so much was available, readily available. Yet, despite possessing all the external factors, we see there is a complete decline of Islam in the Ummah. And the reason for this, as ulama explain, is when you see decline externally, remember there's a decline internally. Remember, there's a decline internally. So spirituality, spirituality and spiritually and tawakkul and taqwa, zuhud, qanat, ifat, afiat, all the qualities internally which the believer should be having, that will be of the lowest. So the quality and the sifat of Allah لا ينظر إلى أجسامكم وإلى إلى سوركم Allah does not look at your external factors ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأمالكم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your hearts and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at the quality of the amal that emanate from the Ummah. With regards to diseases and sicknesses, we'll just run through some few concepts and ideas how the people of the world will plot and plan. So we see in the United States and globally now Alzheimer's disease has, has become quite a horrific disease. Uh, initially, it started in the 1980s. I'm not going to go into detail. Where BSC was common, which is known in animals as mad cow disease. But a person who dies from CJD, now there was a disease that spread at that time, which is called CJD. Now, if you do an autopsy, then from the autopsy, we can see whether a person has really died from Alzheimer's or this disease your CJD. But if we just go through statistics, and this is the US statistics, an investigative journalist has written that there was a massive increase in Alzheimer's disease, and this is sinister to the extreme. They say there's a 9,000% in domestic diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease since 1979. 
So from the disease control center, 653 people died in the US. And 23 years later, 2002, 59,000 people. So no autopsies, etc. tests are done to verify the initial of that. Then avian flu in 2005, President George Bush made a statement, if we had an outbreak somewhere in the United States, do we need, need to quarantine that part of the country? How do you then enforce a quarantine? It's one thing to shut down airplanes. It's another thing to prevent people from coming in to get exposed to the avian flu. And who best to be able to affect the quarantine? One option is to use a military that's able to plan and move. Then in 2008, the National Health Minister, Dr. Siti Fadila, she wrote a book, it's time for the world to change the divine hand behind avian influenza. And uh, there was an allegation against the US government that was secretly working to transform the bird flu in a deadly biological weapon. The Indonesian president, Susilo, also endorsed this concept. Subari became deeply worried by the fact that the World Health Organization shared samples with the US with the U.S. National Laboratory. And part of her statement was whether they use it to make a vaccine or develop chemical weapon would depend on the interests of the U.S. government. It is indeed a very dangerous situation for the destiny of humanity. It is a matter of choice whether to use material for vaccines or biological weapon development. Then one year later, after that, an Austrian journalist, Jane Bergermeister, filed criminal charges against certain agencies, FBI, UN, World Health Organization. And uh, that whole filing was that the bird flu was designed to spread all across the planet. It would kill billions in no time. And the object was to cull the herd, to keep populations low in a manageable way and to erase populations that were obsolete and no need. There was evidence that an international corporate criminal syndicate which had annexed high government officials at a federal state level had an intent on carrying out mass genocide against people in the United States by using an artificial genetic flu pandemic virus and force vaccine program to cause mass death and injury to depopulate America in order to transfer control. And that also goes into detail as well. Then the scenario of disease and an apocalypse and aliens coming in. So this thing called black helicopters. So Jim Keith, who died under questionable circumstances, he wrote a book titled Black Helicopters. The summary of that was that uh, they've been stockpiling black helicopters, unmarked helicopters, or pl planes, drones, certain types of flying equipment. And one example where it was used was throughout Colorado and Western states. They found that uh, the cows of the farmers, the carcasses, the left ear, and certain body organs were cut away. And the entire carcass, the blood was drawn out with no traces of blood left on the ground and no footprints. So they've been doing research as well to simulate a so-called invasion, alien invasion, or mysterious deaths, where a person's blood will be sucked up Obviously, there's other connotations to this whole scenario. May Allah protect us. Then if we study DPG, DPG is the way proving ground. That's in Great Salt Lake City, Desert, Utah. And it's surrounded by mountains. And it falls under the U.S. Army uh, control. And they, their primary work is to research chemical and biological weapons from a defensive perspective. On uh, January 27, 2011, there was a lockdown, apparently one vial went missing, and that vial, uh, which was called VX, had the power to cause nausea, sweating, uh, 
fever and to restrict breathing. If left untreated, it will infect and cause death as well. Thus, chemical and biological weapon testing ground, they use to test the anthrax, other toxic nerve agents, um, which could be used and is controversial as well. So that's something very serious to consider. Then if we look at Ebola and uh, from the initial outbreaks from the 1970s and an area where the near Ebola River was where the disease took its initial form and when it went into the US and they were talking about martial law, uh, a connection to that and then an electromagnetic pulse disaster. So a electromagnetic pulse disaster is where an EMP attack happens that basically destabilizes the entire nation's power grid and uh, realize that if the power goes off, so when any situation is a need to incapacitate a country, you do two things. You take off the power and you take out the water. So from a human perspective, if Allah gives us to fit to go far away from civilization, time will come in my ummah where their safety will be in the mountains. Go completely green, organic, everything possible from your milk to your eggs to whatever you can, whatever you see, you can eat. Means the more we forego, go down the line, we go into a supermarket, we buy in from the supermarket, how many chains are there? The worst is to go uh, out to takeaways. That's the worst. That, won't, that you don't even see the oil, you don't even see the pots, you don't even see the people making it. You don't see the chain at all. Now here you are planting it, so you've seen the chain from the beginning to the end. Likewise, if we can get our own poles, brilliant. If we can get our own energy generating structures, brilliant. The more we can go off the grid, the better. Then there's FEMA with the Federal Emergency Management Agency which uh, employs around 15,000 employees. But they've been secretly creating a series of nationwide camps and they call it uh, camps for the undesirables. So if you look at uh, the national report in 2014, the Federal Emergency Management Agency has officially opened the first political realignment facility, more famously known as concentration camp or death camp in an area southwest of Wilcox, Arizona. The agency plans on opening another four such facilities in 2015, plans to have 12 up and running. The facility is designed as Camp Alpha, nearly 500 acres of federal property near National Park in South Arizona. FEMA says the camp can hold as many as 10,000 Americans with barrack style living conditions. So why the need for concentration camps suddenly? Then we can study Fort Detrick. So it's a U.S. biological laboratory that was established in 1943. And again, they've done studies in pathogens where they can be weaponized. So anything from bioterrorism to uh, chemical warfare to biological agents from bacteria, viruses, toxins, human modified forms. If we look at one uh, XCI physician, uh, he wrote in one of his books about this year and fought that trick. It's given in detail, but just one part of it which we will quote is although the focus of my report was a bio-warfare lab should be closed, the issue of HIV virus developed by the Fort Detrick lab formed about 18 pages of my report. At the time I wrote that report, the vaccine for HIV that had been developed in six months of work had already been used by the cabal since 1983. So when they develop any virus, they would develop a antidote 
which will be kept and distributed to all the elites. There is another thing called body snatchers, human replacements, and part of the black helicopters which we discussed. But another port, Porton Town, which is in Walshire, England, is one of the most secretive installations in the UK. Most of the work carried out there in Porton Town is completely secret. One of the Bruce George member of the Parliament, these are his words. I would not say that the Defence Committee is micromanaging either Port and Down. We visited but with 11 members of Parliament and 5 staff covering the Department like the Ministry of Defence and Armed Forces. It would require erroneous, it would be quite erroneous of me and misleading for me to say we know everything that is going down in Port and Down. It's too big for us to know and secondly there are many things happening there that I am not even certain ministers are fully aware of, let alone parliamentarians. So there were some animal activists that thought so that they were doing tests on mice, rats, monkeys. They broke in one day and they entered the room and in the room was tables that had lifeless or like sleeping duplicates of the current the entire British politicians, they were duplicate bodies there. Continuing with Joshua Lederberg, who, who had uh, some involvement with this research program and uh, he was involved in the Columbia, Columbia University in 1947, the genetics department at Stanford University. He had done some dumb research as well and uh, it was focused on the outcome of potential viruses but his research was that the few concepts when they had to launch and, and, and there's different plottings and plannings based on what suits the time. We're just going through different scenarios. So another virus was from an external alien but you know biology infection makes him seem unlike a possibility, however converse argument can be made that is involved of terrestrial bacteria capable of coping with organisms. So uh, germ warfare and mutant forms of viruses that would develop, that would spread over the Earth's population for a new black death. Let the people of Iman do what they need to do. Let the people of Batil do what they need to do. Walillahi al-amr. Everything is in the hands of Allah. Benefit is from Allah. Harm is from Allah. Good is from Allah. Bad is from Allah. Shifa is from Allah. Everything is from Allah. Our hearts need to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to start to increase our connection with Allah and our A'mal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Some surah that we should be in the habit of reading, Surah Zilzal, Ida Zul Zil Ta'dil Nisf Al-Qur'an. If you read site Surah Zilzal, you get the reward of half the Qur'an. وَكُرُوا اللَّهَ تَعْدِلُ ثُلْفَ Quran. And uh, Surah Ikhlas, one third of the Qur'an. وَقُلْ يَا يُلْكَافِرُنْ تَعْدِلُ رُبُعَ Quran. One quarter of the Quran. So this surah, if you get a chance out of salat, read it as well at least once a day. What the need of the reward. If Allah gives a person tawfiq more, alhamdulillah. And in our salat as well. لا يستطيع أحدكم أن يقرأ ألف آية كل يوم. A thousand ayat. If you read الهاكم التكاثر. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.